Marauder Miniatures have been a household name amongst tabletop gamers for decades. Established in 1988 by Ali and Trish Morrison, the company would see itself become an integral part of the Games Workshop miniature line. Many of these sculpts became truly iconic bastions of the Warhammer world, and none more so than the Marauder Giant. Welcome back Johnny Watchers, so let's get into this. Let's paint a Marauder Giant. First off, I'm gonna go in with all my base coats and I'm gonna start with Flesh Base from Vallejo. Shadow Flesh to the hair. So I'm going to keep this scheme as close as I can to the 4th edition box art um, back in the day. Uh, so first of all I'm going to come in with a royal blue. So it's the clothing that really brings the, the first challenge with painting this guy. Uh, it's made, He's made of a patchwork of different materials and colours and all sorts. So getting down those base coats for that is takes takes some time because you're always switching in and out of different colors so if you're thinking about painting this guy a little tip from me don't stick the barrel and the sword on to the giant whilst you're painting paint them in sub assemblies they get in the way you'll see later on in, in the video i do actually take the barrel off so here's my new way of painting yellow starting with a pink base. So I'm starting to use these AK interactive um, colors a lot more in my paintwork and uh, this deep yellow is a really nice yellow and it does go very nicely over pink. Dark green is next from Vallejo. This is a tough color to paint. It uh, needs quite a few coats before you get it uniform. So for any areas I'm gonna use red, I'm gonna go and use a flat red from Vallejo. So we come to the first tricky bit of painting. So to create a pattern on the green patch, I'm going at a diagonal with some red lines. I've slowed down the footage here just so you can see my brush control, uh, just how slow I take to do these lines. I don't rush it, just try and carefully draw them in. After that, we're back with the base coats and I'm gonna come in with a black. I realized they overdid it with the green, so I'm uh, just going back over that green. So I'm using Stonewall Gray by Vallejo and this is a base coat for any white areas. So the bottom patch has a yellow border, so I'm just gonna draw that in with a gray and then fill in the middle. Gonna use a beastie brown to cover any ropes. Then scrag brown for any leather areas. I use a leather brown by Vallejo to base the weapon, which is a big trunk. So to any metal areas on the miniature, I'm gonna be doing non-metallic metals. Uh, so the first base coat for the silver areas is a dark sea blue by Vallejo. And for any gold areas, we're gonna use XV88. Anywhere I put the stonewall gray, I'm now gonna just come in with a white. 
which marks the end of the base coat section. And this is what it looked like once I had finished my base coats. I don't use many washes on this miniature, but I do use a wash on the flesh, and that is Reichland Flesh, just to give the flesh a bit of depth. So once the wash is dry, I'm going to come back in to the flesh. This is where we're going to start getting a bit more technical now. So I'm going to start wet blending um, different shades of flesh colours into each other to create the shadows and highlights. So I'm mainly using Flesh Base by Vallejo, Shadow Flesh Base by Vallejo and White to give you the uh, high highlights. They're the main three. Um, sometimes here and there I do come in with a few different colours uh, to try and give a bit more life to the 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 skin uh, which I say add in some reds here and there and maybe some purples so once I've done the skin I start hitting the clothing areas for some highlights and I'm starting with a blood red then coming in with my blue and I'm using the magic blue to go over any blue areas so mixing white and blue I'm just creating my third highlight there to my blue. The green is highlighted by adding yellow to the base color and just keep going up from there. Just being careful where you may have added those red stripes, but just building up those highlights. Adding black grey to the black areas just to give that a small highlight. So whilst I was messing around with the black, I used the black uh, to dot the eyes. So a little trick here, um, I find that I very rarely highlight yellow. If I get a yellow to the uh, a nice vibrant yellow, I like to just shade it rather than highlight it and with that I'm shading it with uh, some or light oranges uh, so I've just added red to the base colour but I'm using it as a glaze I'm simply glazing in the shadows here so it takes time to build up you can't quite see it on the recording here but it does slowly build up and gives you your shadows which then in turn makes that yellow pop and cre almost create a sort of natural highlight. So a nice simple way to highlight leather, I use a Japanese uniform or it could be any sort of khaki type colour and simply sort of overbrush. So not quite dry brush but overbrush and then hit those edges with the Japanese uniform. And it gives that nice worn effect. To highlight the hair, I added a orange to the original base colour. So I've just added in a bit more orange to the mix, just to get the next highlight, just getting gradually closer to the edge or to the ends of the hair. The final highlight to the hair, I add a bit of yellow to the mix. It goes on quite stark, but it, when it dries, it dies down and it gives a nice um, natural highlight to the brown. Okay so probably to the most complex part of the mon miniature and it's probably some of the bits that take the longest to paint and that's the non-metallic metals. Um, starting here with the gold um, I'm using uh, the XV88 as the base. We then have um, Japanese uniform which I'm applying now and then I highlight that up to white uh, and then I come in with the shadows with XV, XV88 again and then we come all the way back down to sort of a, a black. So I'm currently doing this on a lot of my miniatures now uh, using non-metallic metals um, simply because I am just trying to practice it and learn it. Uh, by no means am I particularly good at it um, but you don't get better in 
unless you practice. So this is why they appear on many of my miniatures at the moment. So I'm just trying to bring it up to a real stark, sort of a white highlight there. So just bring it up to uh, having sort of points of light shining. And then I'm going to come in with um, darker colors now to so start giving it the contrast. And then once I've done that, I then sort of glaze it all over to blend it all in. And hopefully that gives the effect of gold. So the second and last wash I use on the miniature and that's going to go on his weapon. So I didn't catch this on film but using a dark sea blue I penned in a tattoo to his arm. I'm simply now glazing over that with a flesh base um, to make it feel a bit more authentic. So one of the last things on the miniature to do is the last bit of freehand and that's just some fleur de lises on this black area uh, just following the box art uh, just taking my time just penning them in and if i make a mistake i just go back over the black and start again or just thin out a line just take your time I wanted the fleur de lises to be yellow, uh, so I went in and went over them with a pink, and now I'm going back over them with a yellow. So the same process as I did with the yellow panels. Um, just, it's just a nice way of painting yellow, makes it pop. Um, yeah, and it makes these fleur de lises look quite cool. So with some basing and some finishing touches, the giant is finally done. There were a few things I didn't capture on video. So I did some black line into some of the panels, um, uh, some extra highlights, just to some of the little bits that um, were a little bit tricky to film and paint at the same time. But essentially, that's how I painted the Marauder Giant. So what do you think? Please put your comments in the comment section below. It's always nice to hear uh, from you guys. Uh, please let me know what you think maybe I should have done or could have done. Uh, it's always really interesting to see how people have different takes on these things. So if you want to follow me uh, to see a bit more content like this, please hit the subscribe button, always helps. Um, also do have a Discord server, I will put the link in the description below. Please pop in, say hi, I'm always there to have a little chat about the hobby. So with that, thank you so much for getting this far into the video. And as always guys, stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.